What's up guys, I'm BTC, we got some new information about BlizzCon, what we can expect for events, and also a full schedule of what's going on. Before we get started, if you enjoy the content on this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell because YouTube has changed how their system works and now it greatly favors the big name brand channels over individual content creators like me. So hit the bell and share the video, I would appreciate it and also your other favorite YouTubers would appreciate the same as well. BlizzCon is just over a week away, starting on Friday, November 1st and continuing on Saturday, November 2nd. There's going to be a ton of stuff that is going on there. Now, for everyone, if you can't go to the convention itself, and by now it's probably too late, you can still get a virtual ticket which will allow you to watch all of the content. Now, some of this will be available to everyone no matter what. That's going to be the opening ceremony and also all of the esports championships, the tournaments, that sort of stuff. All of that will be available to everyone, but the special panels on how they make stuff and how they're updating the game and this sort of thing, all of that is going to require a virtual ticket. Now, obviously, there was some pretty big problems with last year's BlizzCon, and they need to fix that. There's still a bunch of problems going on right now with Blizzard, and that might actually change how they handle BlizzCon. I'll get to that in just a second, but first, let's go over all of the content that we can expect to see with the schedule. Starting things off on Friday is the opening ceremony. This is going to be at 1 p.m. Central. All of the times that I say here are also going to be in Central time, by the way. And the first thing is the opening ceremony. This is going to be on all of their different channels, and it's going to cover Diablo, StarCraft, Warcraft, Overwatch, pretty much every game that they're running right now. They're going to go through, they're going to have a section of it where they're going to talk about it, announce the new thing, and also show off any new trailers and that sort of thing. So this is going to be available to everyone. You're not going to need a virtual ticket for this. This is the really big part where they show off basically all of the huge announcements. So if there's Overwatch 2, if there's a new animated short, if there's a new map, if there's a new character, all that stuff will be announced at the opening ceremony. Besides the Overwatch World Cup, which is going to be running all day, there's only one other Overwatch panel on Friday, and that's at 6.15 Central, which is Blizzard Animation, the art of setting the scene. So there's going to be some of the artists and writers who are going to be on this panel, and they're going to explain and kind of break down how they make these animated shorts. And it seems it's like almost guaranteed that there will be a new animated short that is part of that opening ceremony. Now, we did have a leak that says it's a little bit more about May and kind of like a big reveal for Overwatch 2. I don't know if that's going to be true or not, but I think there's pretty much a guarantee that there is going to be an animated short, and this panel here is just going to break down how they went about creating it and maybe some of the little insights and stuff about all this stuff. From this particular panel, there might be some hints about what we can expect in the future, like what character is likely next to get an animated short or a comic or something like that. They, they're probably going to drop a couple of hints during this. I wouldn't expect any really huge massive reveals, but there might be a few little things of note. Now on Saturday, there is a ton of stuff. For the second day, you're going to once again have the Overwatch World Cup running pretty much all day. But at the very start, which is noontime central, they have the Overwatch League 2020 Watchpoint Season Preview. This might be where they announce any possible new teams or changes to the Overwatch League. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot in the way of kind of hints about the game. This is more about obviously the Overwatch League and esports and that sort of thing. So if that's what you're interested in, there might be some things there. Now later on at 2 p.m. Central, there's going to be artists at work. This is a little different from what we saw on the previous day. This is probably going to show any new character, because if they do announce a new character or if they announce a new map, they're probably going to show us how they created that character and also how they created the map and all that sort of stuff. The the step-by-step -step process that they use in designing and, and possible other ideas is. We might also get some hints at what the legendary skins are for the character that does get announced if there is one because usually they'll show off the artwork for it at this point. So this is something where we might get a little bit more information. But the really big one is going to be at 3.15pm and this is the 
Overwatch update. So it just says, you know, come and learn about Overwatch from the developers of the game. This is probably the biggest one because this is where you have the people that are working on hero balance, map balance, and just in general. This is going to be the one where Jeff Kaplan is probably at as well. And this is where they're going to talk about all of the big things that are going on with Overwatch. Now, if they do announce the expansion or whatever they happen to announce there, they're going to kind of expand on it in this panel right here. And this is the one panel besides the opening ceremony that's probably going to give the most information of the game and what we can expect in the future. And then a little bit later on, we also have the Voices of Overwatch, which is at 715 p.m. Central. This is just the voice actors. It might be interesting to some people, but don't expect really anything kind of hints or, or anything new about the game. This is pretty much just the voice actors talking about how they get into character and how they kind of do what they do, and, and then that's sort of it. It's more about stories about their personal experience making content and voices for the game as opposed to getting anything new. So there are two kind of big panels that you want to look for. The, well, maybe three depending on what you're looking at, but the, the artists at work and the also the Overwatch update is going to be the really big ones. Now, I do want to briefly talk about some changes to BlizzCon itself. Because with the Overwatch release, the launch party on Switch, Blizzard kind of canceled it and they just didn't show up and Nintendo had to be the one to announce that Blizzard wasn't going to be there. And it seemed like Nintendo wasn't really very happy about it. Also, it seems that Blizzard just recently canceled a big kind of 15 year anniversary party for World of Warcraft. It might have been in Taiwan, I'm not exactly sure. but. So there's two events that they just canceled, and of course, all of this is related to the situation with China. So what are they going to do with BlizzCon? Well, I don't know if there's going to be some sort of enforced dress code, if people are going to be, you know, forced to change their shirts or whatever. I'm sure they're probably not going to allow signs, like people holding up signs and stuff. That's, that's probably not going to happen. Now, the big thing, though, is what about the questions? Because all of these panels... For all the different games, they always have a line of people that can come up, they grab the microphone, and they ask questions. That's where we got the famous red shirt guy. Last year, we got the Diablo Immortal, you know, is this an out-of-season April Fool's joke? So, you know, that was really bad last year, and that was just, you know, about the game. Now, with all of the other stuff that's going on with Blizzard, I'm wondering if they're just not going to allow people to ask questions. Or if they do, they might end up having people put their questions on a card or something and then having a host or one of the panelists read the card and ask the question right there. I just, I don't know, with everything that's going on, I, I kind of think it's, I would be surprised if they give the microphone to just anyone at random, like whoever gets in line, I mean, they can ask them, hey, you know, what question are you going to ask? And the person can say, oh, well, I'm going to ask about, you know, such and such and the new animated short. But then when they actually get the microphone, <laughs> obviously, you know, they ask about the, the whole China situation and blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know if they're going to actually allow that. This is me from the future. I was in the process of editing this video together and I got some new information. This is what it looks like for the different events. As you can see here, question submission for the World of Warcraft Q&A panel. You have to head over to the certain area, the Dark Moon Fair, and submit your question. You'll see a gnomish mailbox, you fill out a card and drop it in. We'll answer as many as we can and I'm sure they will be very selective with what questions they allow to be asked and it's probably going to be a host or a panelist or something that does the question so that's your answer they're not going to allow people to get up to the microphone and actually ask any of the questions they're going to require you to put it on a card there you go rip in pepperonis red shirt guy now, like I said, the big announcements are going to be in the opening ceremony, and you don't have to get a virtual ticket for that. If there are any things that are announced or showed off during the other panels, then I'll be sure to make some videos and update you guys on all the important stuff. So even if you don't have a virtual ticket, don't worry, because I'll get you all the info that you need. 
One other thing that I do want to mention is I will not be at BlizzCon, so don't look for me on any of the panels. If you go there, don't try to find me because you're going to be looking a long time. I just, I haven't gone to any conventions in the last couple years. I used to. I went to a couple of PAX Easts and PAX Souths. I even went to a couple of Minecons back when I was playing Minecraft. But I haven't gone to any conventions in the last couple years. I don't know. It's just, it's really expensive. And I don't know. It just, I mean, I like to meet fans and stuff. The thing is, usually when I go to these conventions, I'll go and I just spend most of the time with the fans. Like, I almost don't even care about what's going on at the panels or, or any of that sort of stuff. And I just kind of, you know, walk around and, and meet people and that sort of deal. But I will not be at this year's BlizzCon. Maybe another one in the future. I don't know. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, come hang out in my Discord server and my Twitch live stream. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault.